Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. Last week when we were testing the tyres on the frog, one of the front wheels fell off. Actually it was the axle or spindle that came away from the upright. Looking at it closely, it looks like it was just a press fit spline, so there really wasn't that much holding it in. This week then, we're going to see if we can rebuild the upright and get the frog running again. First we need to remove the spindle from the wheel. We'll need to grip the splined end so we can undo the nut. We need to be really careful not to damage the splines though, so we'll use some cardboard inside some pliers to add a bit of protection. With the nut removed, we can give the splines a bit of a wipe down as it's got rather greasy. For now, we'll just wipe it on a paper towel. You can see the splines nice and clearly now, and they don't look like they're damaged. But you'd expect that as it's steel, which is a lot harder than the cast upright. Next we need to remove the upright itself, which is just a case of undoing the two shoulder screws, and out it comes. I did notice that the lower shoulder screw on the other side was all but falling out too, so we'll need to clean that one up as well, and try some fresh thread lock, otherwise we'll probably end up losing that one at some point in the future. We can give the upright a good wipe down with a paper towel, but the bit inside where the spindle goes is still full of black oily gunge. If we want to stand a chance of the spindle staying put, we need to make sure it's absolutely spotless inside. With a cotton bud, we can get a lot of the rubbish out, but we really need to get it completely oil free. Same goes for the spindle. What we need is in this rather nondescript bottle. I really wish they put labels on. Sometimes I don't even say what it is on the invoice, and you have to give it a good sniff to figure it out, which isn't good. Anyway, we're using IPA, isopropyl alcohol which does seem to be available again in decent quantity. For this, 99% is good, but 70% will do too. It will just take a bit longer for it all to dry out. We need to pour some into a pot, making sure there's enough to cover the upright completely. And right away, we will drop the spindle in for a good soak. And using another cotton bud, we'll start mopping around inside the hole in the upright to clear out some of the gunge. Now we pop the upright in the alcohol and leave it for 20 minutes or so to soften everything up. When we come back we want to use more cotton buds, mopping around until, using a fresh one, it comes out completely clean. While it's still wet we can wipe around the rest of the upright to clean it up with a fresh paper towel. Then leave it to the side for all the alcohol to evaporate. For the spindle we just need to wipe it clean on another paper towel and keep wiping until it stops leaving behind any skid marks. And you might need to dip it back in the alcohol once or twice if it gets a bit dry. When done, the two parts should be cleaner than when they were new and ready to put back together. However, there is a problem. If we line the bits up, we can see the spindle isn't going to go into the upright without a bit of a fight. Now we could just press it in using a vise, or better yet a press, but that runs a risk of the hard steel spindle damaging the soft upright. To make it easier, we're going to use heat expansion. Effectively hot metals get bigger, and cold metal shrinks. Now before doing anything else, we'll pop the spindle in the freezer so it's ready to fit later. We're going to be needing to get the upright to around 180 degrees C, so to save getting singed, we'll clamp it in a vise. Now we don't want to grab it close to where the spindle goes, as the big vise will draw the heat away very quickly. I'm going to use some more cardboard for protection, and clamp it up at the ball end. Now alternatively, you could of course put the entire vise and the upright in the oven at 180 degrees C for 20 minutes, and just let the whole thing heat up. After all, that's exactly what you do when changing bearings in an RC engine. A heat gun would of course work a treat to warm the upright up, but I like a bit of fire from time to time, so I'm going to use a torch. You have to be a bit careful around cast metal with a torch, as you don't want to concentrate on one spot for too long, as it's not impossible to crack it. Move back and forth, and try and heat it up nice and evenly. So, now it's hot, we can go and get the spindle from the freezer. I wrapped it in a paper towel, so it should stay as cool for as long as possible. Now we can heat the upright back up again. Now doing it with a torch or heat gun needs a little bit of experience to judge the temperature. Sticking it in an oven does make that a bit easier. Generally I find when you take the torch away, you should get a little whiff of smoke from the metal if you're somewhere near. Really though, it's just something you need to get a feel for with a bit of trial and quite a lot of error. I'm going to quickly apply a tiny bit of thread lock to the end of the spindle before fitting it. Now red permanent would be ideal, 
but I've only got blue handy, which will also work, just not quite as well. Now we jam the spindle in, and if everything's just right, it should go straight to the bottom with minimal fuss. Unfortunately, I took a bit too long, so it's got stuck, and needed a few light taps to get it seated. One of the issues with trying to film things is everything takes three times as long as normal. With everything up to temperature, as long as you're quick, it should be really easy. After leaving it for a few minutes to finish cooling, we can give it a good wipe down and see how it looks. We shouldn't be able to see any of the splines, as they should all be down inside the upright. And with the wheel on, it should sit all the way down with just a little bit of the spindle shoulder sticking out past the outside bearing. Before refitting, we're going to give the front of the buggy a bit of a wipe down. Now it's already fairly clean, but since the uprights look so nice now, it would be a shame to get them dirty. Now since those shoulder screws were trying to fall out, we're going to use some fresh Loctite. We need to be really careful not to get any on the moving parts. The easiest method is to apply it to the threads in the upright rather than the ends of the screws. We just need a tiny spot on the end of a cocktail stick and we can wipe it around inside the threads. Then the shoulder screws go back in, top and bottom. The wheel goes on, followed by a nut, and that's it rebuilt. I'll do the same on the other side as those screws were on their way out too. And there we go, that's the frog ready to bash again. All that said, I've got a feeling that the upright might be ever so slightly damaged. I'm thinking the hole for the spindle probably isn't quite right. Maybe from factory, I'm really not sure. Either way, I'm expecting it to fail again at some point, so I've got a spare set of new ones ready to go. One of the good things about the frog is how easy a lot of the bits are to swap out without having to go home for a full strip down and rebuild. So there we go then, a bit of a shorter video this week, but we got to use the torch, which is always a good time. So as always, thanks for watching, like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a message if there's something on your mind. Bye guys! Thank you.